Hello and welcome to my presentation on Hewless agent-based manufacturing for workshop production. My name is James Gopsell and I'm a senior research fellow at the University of Bristol and the Centre for Modelling and Simulation. Uh, in this presentation I'll be discussing the evolution of workshops and the nature of demand within them. This then takes us to our research question and the approach we have taken to answer it. I will then discuss the experimental setup used to study how our approach can answer our research question and the results are then presented, which leads us to the conclusion and key findings of our research. So workshops are a key component of engineering. It supports product development, prototyping, research and development, bespoke and small, ma small batch production, as well as education. These facilities often employ a wide variety of manufacturing technologies and have small teams of expert technicians supporting individuals in realising their designs. Over the past decade, we have seen the rise of additive manufacturing in these workshops, and these machines have transferred workshop practice, as, as well as enabling new types of workshops to exist, such as makerspaces. We also see new deployments, uh, such as in libraries, to uh, enhance their service, service offerings to society. One really interesting aspect of workshops is the challenge in having to handle often very unique, diverse and unsteady demand profiles. You know, technicians are never sure what jobs are going to be coming through the workshop and at what volume. A perfect example of this is during student projects where all the students will be doing running different projects and have different uh, manufacturing and prototyping needs and there will be sudden surges of demand as their designs develop and they need to meet deadlines. So these uh, demand profiles are unlike you know, to typical production systems where the demand and types of jobs are well known well in advance of actually committing to the, the work in the actual facility. Um, so these, in mo mo most times uh, today that we see these workshops operating on a first come, first serve basis. So that leads us on to our question of actually, can we do better than first come, first serve? And how can we coordinate the manufacturer of diverse workshop demand. And the approach that we've been taking is this idea of a brokering additive manufacturing approach. Uh, we have three types of agents, uh, job agents, machine agents, and the brokering agents itself. And the brokering agents enables the jobs and machines to communicate with one another through direct messaging, broadcasting messages to jobs, and broadcasting messages to machines. And the idea beauty of the kind of agent based approach is that our machines uh, can be very different in their own makeup, you know, it could be lathes or added to manufacturing machines, um, and the actual agent themselves know about their own capability and discuss that through the network. And that's the same that goes for jobs, the jobs know about themselves, know what, they're, what they need in terms of a manufacturing capability, and they can communicate to that to the machines. And together they coordinate with one another to say who is going to manufacture what and when. So to explore this approach, we've been looking at, uh, we've developed an agent-based model using AnyLogic. And in that AnyLogic model, there are three types of uh, agents, the broker, the job, and the machine. So the broker is a single agent, and the job and machines are populations of job agents and machine agents. In that model, we had different machine logics uh, that were able to query and ask jobs about their availability and capability. So machines looked for longest print times, shortest print times, uh, first come first serve basis, and also just a random selection from the current, current pool of jobs that are, are available. So this uh, gave us a really unique capability of configuring the system as and when demand changes uh, on the workshop. And that's something that we really wanted to explore. So our experiment was to replicate a 20 machine workshop uh, working a nine to five working pattern and we uh, observe a high demand on, on a Tuesday or in that working pattern on a five day working week. Uh, it has a triangular distribution of typical job times. Uh, we gain that from looking at uh, research on uh, prototyping, typical pro prototyping jobs through AM. And we had a look at five different configurations of the 20 printers either them all set up to first come first serve, all set to longest print time first serve, all set to shortest print time first serve, random selection, and then a hybrid combination featuring five machines of each of those logics. 
And what we were assessing on was whether the rolling timing system for the jobs, how long did the jobs stay in that system when they were from when, when they were submitted, and the distribution of that timing system across all the jobs. Uh, was it that all jobs received a delay? Uh, experienced a delay or did some jobs experience higher delay than others so that's what we were looking to examine and as, as one might expect we did see that actually configuring these sets of agents to different configurations really gave us different responses to that demand profile uh, we see that first come first serve here responds uh, quite well quickly uh, you see a bit of a delay from the Wednesday period that's where that the red line is the median time in system um, we see two humps of uh, two rises in mean time in system for shortest print time um, the difference here as well is if you look on the uh, right axis in terms of rolling time in system that some of the shortest print uh, overall and the shortest print times we see them over across all the jobs that the rolling timing system never raise, goes above 50, whereas actually it goes above uh, 60 in first come first serve. So there were some jobs in first come first serve that were particularly delayed, while short print time were able to tackle quite a lot of jobs, but they were all, like I say, consistently delayed. And that's what we can see in this figure here. We looked at that distribution of jobs where actually you get different behaviours depending on our logic sets. And ultimately what the key results are that we do get significant differences in the timing system uh, observed depending on our configuration of agent logics that we're using on our machines and uh, some you know configurations were able to respond uh, to the to the demand quicker than others and also return to what we would say a normal the steady state of the workshop than others so again we need what we're really interested in how we then decide which of those configurations should we use depending on that demand that's coming into our our, uh, our system so for us our next steps uh, we are looking at creating a living lab and the uh, that is then using all the different printers uh, we have in our lab we are connecting those up introducing them with our own agent based logics and they're actually uh, now talking with one another, able to coordinate jobs. So the key thing for this is that we are able to then um, validate our models and build upon our models uh, with respect to our living lab scenario. And these are being run with our student projects, uh, submitting jobs to the system uh, as, as I speak. So in conclusion, we have shown that the set of 20 machines can be further optimised to tackle varying input demand via a coordinated manufacturing uh, agent based approach and the results uh, in the paper show that actually the time of system of jobs can be affected by up to 20, uh, 40% we can change that by 40% and the range of jobs affected can be changed by 20% uh, depending on that configuration so I'd just like to say thank you very much for listening to my presentation uh, all our work is published on the brokering additive manufacturing website at our DMF lab uh, web page and all the living lab source code for our, uh, our you know physical twin of our digital models is available on github so if anyone's interested in replicating or building a, a living lab of agent based manufacturing system then please uh, give us a call and we're happy to share and get you up and running with, with our agent based code so thank you very much and I very much look forward to your questions